Greetings and welcome to the Kanguka Broadcast. My name is Chris Nikumana. Today is Tuesday. I want to encourage all the listeners who are losing hope because they are going through hard times. In yesterday's broadcast, I was telling you that it's forbidden to complain and that we should give thanks in everything. I told you that complaining and thanksgiving can't dwell together. I don't know what you're going through. Maybe you're going through difficult problems and they are causing you to complain and you have no thanksgiving left in you. This morning, I want to speak to those who are suffering, your life isn't going well, you're struggling in your marriage, you're struggling in your job, maybe you have an incurable disease, something's not going well. Some people even complain about their blessings. God has blessed you with something and you're complaining about what God has already given to you. But you need to understand that anything you receive from God is a blessing and you should give thanks for it even if it's not exactly what you wanted. Today, I want I want to share with you a word of encouragement from Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 26. In verse 25, Jesus is showing us that people often complain about little things and they forget about the more important things that God has already given to them. Verse 25 says, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. And then Jesus asked a very important question. He said, Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? I want you to understand why Jesus asked that question. He was showing them that some people complain because they don't have enough clothes to put on their bodies but they forget that it's God who gave them a body and he's the one who protects and takes care of their bodies. You have a body but you complain about clothes. In other words, Jesus was saying, what's more important between clothes and your body? What's more important, food or your life? Maybe you went to bed hungry last night. You may have nothing to eat, but you have life and your life is a gift from God. So Jesus is showing them that they should first be thankful for the life they have. They should give thanks for the body they have. They should give thanks because that body is still healthy even if it doesn't have everything it needs. Jesus was trying to teach them to give thanks for the little things they already have. Verse 26 says, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valued than they? Please note that Jesus didn't say the father of the birds, but he said your heavenly father. He was referring to the father of the people of Israel. He was saying your father feeds the birds even though he's not their father. If God the father can feed the birds and he can take care of them to the point that they don't lack anything, how can he not take care of you who are his children? Jesus was showing them that they should stop worrying because they have God in heaven. If you believe that God is your father, you need to stop worrying. If your situation looks bad, I am sees it and he always intervenes in the lives of those who have faith in him. Maybe your hour hasn't come yet, but you should stop complaining. You should stop saying negative words. You must continue to have faith. You need to keep giving thanks and you need to keep praying. I keep telling people that if you are going through hardships, you shouldn't stop praying. You should actually get closer to God. You need to go before him and you need to tell him that you don't seek him only so you can get the things you want but you seek him because he is your father and he has already given many things which are more valuable than the things you need right now. God has given you life and that's very important. If you're listening to me, it means you're alive. You may be lacking something, maybe you don't have enough money, maybe you don't have peace in your home. Something isn't going well, but you have life and you are listening to words of life. If you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you have eternal life. So I want you to change your perspective. I want you to consider the good things in your life and I want you to give thanks for them. Give thanks for the little things you already have. If your spouse is doing some things that are unpleasing to you, you need to consider the good things that your spouse does and you need to give thanks to God for those things. If you have a child who doesn't behave the way you want, you still need to give thanks to God for your child. Be thankful that you have a child. If you start giving thanks in the little things, I am we see that you have a grateful heart and he will visit you. So let's stop complaining and let's put our eyes on I am expecting that he will intervene in his perfect timing.
We are now in the second part of the broadcast and we're going to continue the teaching I called Remove All Your Idols. It means that you shouldn't just remove some idols, but you need to remove all your idols. So where do you remove them from? You remove them from your heart. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. You can read it in your own Bible. Life flows out of your heart. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus comes in your heart and he sits on the throne of your heart. It means that when you say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as Lord and Savior, Jesus comes into your heart and he wants to rule over your heart. There is a throne in your heart where I I am can sit. If you have idols in your life, it means that those idols are sitting on the throne of your heart and they are sitting on the throne that belongs to I am. Some people idolize other people. It can be a singer or a sportsman or a preacher that you greatly admire and who has a very special place in your life to the point that this person is now sitting on the throne of I am. That's why I say that you must remove all your idols because I am wants to rule over your heart. He wants to sit on the throne of your heart and he doesn't want to share that throne with anyone else. Some men of God claim that they share the glory with God but that's not true. You can share the glory with I am. He can elevate you if he wants but all the glory belongs to him. The purpose of this teaching is to make it clear that I am wants all the glory. He wants all the honor. So Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says that we need to keep our hearts but how do you keep your heart? You keep your heart by not allowing anything that doesn't bring honor to I am. You remove anything that wants to take the place of I am. Let me ask you a question. Who is currently sitting on the throne of your heart? Every person has something that's very dear to his heart. Do you give importance to I am in your heart? How does he compare to the other things that are important to you? Does I am carry more weight in the balance of your heart? In order to better understand this, let's take a look at the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses. You can read about them in Exodus chapter 20. Verse 2 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bandage. Verse 3 says, You shall have no other gods before me. Verse 4 says that you shall not make for yourself one of those caved images that people use as idols. And verse 5 says that you shall not bow down to them nor serve them. I want you to pay attention to the last part of verse 5. It says, For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. This is what the word of God says. You can read it in your own Bible. Let me tell you that if God was a jealous God in the Old Testament, it means that he's still a jealous God today. He doesn't want to share his glory with anyone. God wants to be your one and only God. He wants to be your God. He wants to have all the glory. He wants to be first in everything you do. So starting today, I want to show you some of the things that are binding many listeners. Many of you have idols in your lives and you are not even aware that you have them. When I teach on this topic, many believers say that it doesn't apply to them because they don't bow down to status. But let me tell you that idols aren't limited to status. An idol is anything that's more important than I am in your life. If there is anything in your life that you give more importance to than I am, then according to the Bible, that thing is an idol. Today, I want to start with the biggest idol that's binding a huge number of people all over the world. Let me tell you that money is number one idol that often sits in the throne of I am. Money often becomes an idol for many people. Everybody needs money in order to survive in this world. You need money for food. You need money to feed your children. You need money in order to get ahead in life. But money can quickly become an idol if you put all your mind on it and you give it more importance than I am. Are we talking about about this tomorrow and I will show you that Jesus himself said that money can become your God. Money is an idol for many people but they don't realize it and they think that there is nothing wrong with the love of money. But I want you to understand that we need to remove all our idols. So God willing, tomorrow I will talk about an idol called money and we will see what the word of God says about it. May I am bless you. I wish you a great day. God willing, we continue tomorrow. 
If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.